Alright, my children, welcome to part two of my little Stardew Valley clone series. Um, in this particular video, I'm, what I'm going to show you how to do is um, how to fix some of the bugs that I had encountered in the previous video, how I sorted those out, as well as how to create your own little sprinkler. Um, and I did fix the plant, the planting uh, portion as well, or I guess you would call it sowing and farming. So you can actually plant a brand new seed that doesn't change the tile, um, as well as restrict you from being able to fertilize it if it's already been seeded. As you can see here, I can fertilize this, this tile, but I can't fertilize this one. Um, but I can, in fact, plant a seed here once it's been fertilized, as well as how to get these tiles to um, be besprinkled or watered on. And yeah, I think that will be it. So hopefully this is going to be a much quicker video. I think the last one was like an hour. This one will try to keep it down to about 20 minutes, like a normal human being. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just jump into the code. Whoops. And go to the states that I had previously. So if you remember from the last video... Um, I had these two set cells. Um, I just changed them all to set terrains. That would be for the fertilizing as well as the watering tiles. So all of them now have um, set terrains instead of set cells. That seemed to alleviate some of the problem that I was having before with all that weirdness. If you um, look here when I till the land and I start watering it. It still does that weird stuff, but it's not quite as weird as it was before. So let's see if we can fertilize this and we water it. If we were to fertilize it now, you can see it now actually forms the proper the proper tile. Same thing with this. So, and if we were to till again and just fertilize all of them, then we would also have the same exact deal. So yeah, okay, so that's that's how I was able to kind of solve that problem, I think. Okay, so that's pretty much how that goes. So you can just go into your, your states, your state scripts, and set all these to their proper um, terrains. Uh, again, um, if you were from the last video, you're, you're going to have to go into your tile maps, and you're going to have to create yourself some terrains. So if you don't know how to do that, don't worry. It is in the other video. So, but yeah, all of these will be in. Let's see here. Yeah, here you go. So all I did was here, terrain sets, created a bunch of new ones of what they are: dry tile, water tile, fertilizer, and uh, watered and fertilizer. And then after that, I gave it the paint property. Go to terrains, and then I just picked which terrain that was. So this is the ground. That would be terrain says right here, dry. As you can see here, I just kind of drew in what I wanted. Now I did change the uh, soil tiles as well. Um, I decided to make them just pure plain. That way, it would be easier to see when the tiles were fertilized and not. So that's that's the only reason why I changed that and made them look a little plainer. But yeah, so that was the first thing. I think that was the only bug that I was able to fix, if I can be 100% honest with you. Sorry. Okay, so let's get on to the sprinkler. Uh, do I have anything on the strike box? Yeah, all right, we'll get to that later. Okay, let's get a drink of water and then we'll explain what the hell's going on here. Well, I guess I should uh, start with, start with um, how I created the damn thing. So as you can see here, um, I just made a quick little sprite here. Let me uh, get rid of the collisions for that, and the collisions for that. So yeah, super simple sprite. First thing I did, obviously added an, a sprite node, and then I added a couple of other sprites here. These sprites are for the, um, the water mist, as you can see here. If I were to, oh, I see him. There we go. See here, I play with the frames here. I got a couple of that come out. That's pretty much all it is. Um, and then I have a animation player where I add a track, added a property, selected what I want to manipulate, 
hit an OK, and then it just gave me the option of what I want to. Um, whoops, of what I want to manipulate. I just chose frame, and then after that, um, if you go up to here, you will see that all these have nice little keyframes, and all you have to do is select um, the little key here, and then a frame would appear here. Okay, so that's how you would do that. Um, as for the mist itself, each of them needed a collision box. That way it had a way to grab the tile data that was on the farm. If you remember before, we created... Um, let's see if I can find it in here. Is it in the select? Yeah. We created um, custom data. That way, dependent on what soil type it was, we can identify if it was a dry tile or a water tile or if it was fertilized or whatever. So that's why it needs the collision shapes here. Um, all it is is an area 2D and then a collision shape 2D with the rectangular shape. And then I shrank them down. Go here. Now I shrink these down. If you look closely, they're not the same size as the 16 by 16. And the reason why is because um, if they are 16 by 16, they will still touch each other. So we didn't, I didn't want that. So even if I had, let's say, only this box here and these boxes didn't exist, if I were to press the uh, sprinkler while it was the same size as this, it's still technically um, colliding with this tile and this tile, and it would, it would, um, it would change the tile to wet tiles also. So that's why I just shrank those a little. Okay. So now that, that is explained, and then this area 2D, what was this area 2D for? Uh, it was for the actual, um, for the actual sprinkler itself. I don't think I use that one for anything. I think I'm, I plan on using that some time, sometime later down the line. Um, uh, as you can probably see right now, let's see here. Let's get rid of the, uh, as you can see right now, I can walk right over this thing. So at some point, I'm probably going to make it so that I can't walk over this. I don't remember how they have it in Stardew Valley. I think you can't walk over them, but I don't remember. But just so I can um, do something else with this if I need to. Um, oh, oh, actually, I do remember. It's not to walk over it. It's, um... Um, later down the line when I add the animation for the actual um, hoe when she slams down the hoe to to till the land um, I want to make sure that I, I have a collision shape shape a, uh, a Collision box excuse me a collision box around the sprinkler that way when I have an interaction between those two this thing pops off um, Like it did in the Stardew Valley So I did not do that because I completely forgot <laughs> So yeah um, Next video, I'll definitely do that, though. Okay. And I think that pretty much explains everything about the way this is created. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I just created a bunch of different little sprites. Have a bunch of little collision shapes. And then um, an animation player to play the animation of the sprinklers when, um, whenever I call for it. Okay, let's go into the script. So inside here, I have a couple of variables. So I have a, the first one is a list of waterable tiles. So this actually tells me if the tiles are dry. So these numbers represent those tile data that I was talking about earlier. So we know that from the last video that one is a dry tile and two is a water tile. So that's a wet one. And then here is the fertilized tiles. So this is another list. This one has three. So this tells me that the tile is fertilized and it's dry. And then four is if it's fertilized and already wet. Then here I have a boolean has been set, and all that tells um, Godot is when um, this object is spawned into the scene, it wants to know if it's been set. And if it hasn't been set, then it's going to uh, follow the mouse. And then once it has been set, it it does it no longer follows. As you can see here, I can just do a whole bunch more sprinklers as much as I want, 
and yeah they all work beautifully and you can see here they're ignoring the tiles that aren't tilled but if i were to go over here yeah actually as you can see here it does in fact affect the tiles does it matter okay so and then here the very next thing that i have is the current state and this just is was a way to trigger the uh the sprinkler system here um as you can see here it says check pr uh, sprinkler state <laughs> it's uh if current state is equal to zero i have a for loop here it goes through this node tree it looks for the node called mist right here and then it gets the child count so that means it goes to this here and it finds out how many children it has and it's going to go through every single one of those and then what i want it to do is i want to get the mist node again which is here i want to get child x which would be the very first one and then after that i want to get the child of zero so this the old the way this is working is like this. It's gonna go here, get the mist, the mist node here. Then it's gonna find its child right here. And then it's gonna get the child uh, right after that, which is the collision shape. And all I did was I disabled it. That way it doesn't, um, that way it's not watering tiles while I'm dragging it around. So this is just to keep it from um, having the, the collision boxes active while we're moving it around the screen like so. So if I didn't have this here, in fact, I'll show you exactly what would happen if I did not have this here. If I didn't have this active here, I'm just gonna hit pass. The boxes, as you can see here, would still be activated and it would cause me to uh, have water tiles um, even though the sprinkler hasn't been set and it hasn't gone off. So that's what this is for. And then it has a second state, which just turns the sprinkler off. And I even have an animation here. So, um, you know, I'll get to that in a second. So so before I get to that, um, just, just know that this here is just turning those, those collision shapes um, back on. So this one here turns them off and this one turns them on. And then I have an input, which um, allowed me to toggle back and forth uh, between the states. Uh, eventually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these probably in a ready function. Um, that way, whenever the player just enters the farm or enters out of their house or whatever, excuse me, whenever the sprinklers are loaded in again, they just go off automatically. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, I believe that's how they work in Stardew Valley. If you ever uh, put the sprinklers close to the front door, if you go in and out, you'll actually notice that the sprinklers uh, do go off um, every time you enter you enter and exit the, the farm. Okay. Oh, and the uh, ready note here, it just it's just playing an animation that I have in the animation player called Sprinklers Off. All this is doing is making sure that these... Um, things are, are set to zero, the frame zero. That way the water mist is not on. Forgot to mention that, but don't worry. Did I do anything in here that's worth getting into? Oh, okay, yeah, this is just to make sure that, um, um, that's just to make sure that the, uh, Jesus Christ, words are hard, that the sprinkler, when it's loaded in, it follows. As you can see here, I have the, uh, the check sprinkler, which we just went over. And then I have the accept button, which toggles. Well, it doesn't toggle. It just sets the has been set Boolean to true. That way it stops moving the sprinkler. And if you look down here, I have a, a function that actually um, triggers that. So it says if uh, has been set, it's equal to false, which is what this uh, explanation mark means. It's the opposite of true. Um, I need the position to snap. What is this? Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. So let me back up just a second. So this variable here is gonna be passed on to this, um, this move sprinkler function. That way it knows what position it currently is in. So all I'm saying is when this thing is called, I need this new position 
or this new mouse position to uh, snap to the tile and I need it to be snapped to these to 16 by 16 because that's the size whoops that's the size of these tiles these tiles here are 16 by 16 pixels so that's why we need these here and then I just minus 8 that way it takes that sprite and it has it centered in the middle if I didn't have this here you'll see that it's gonna be offset just a little bit and it's just gonna look a bit weird see it doesn't go in the middle of the uh, It doesn't go in the middle of the tile. So that's why I have that. So yeah, this is just to make sure that it snaps to the tile maps itself. So this used to be called, I believe, Stepify in Godot 3.5, but they changed it to snap. And that's all it's doing. So I'm just grabbing the X position and the Y position and making sure that it snaps to those tiles. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, sprinkler animation. Um, this again, self-explanatory. All it's doing is getting the animation node and playing the sprinkler on. This triggers, when does this trigger? I believe this triggers in the states, yeah. As I was mentioning earlier that I just skipped over, all it's doing is once this current state is active, it's gonna also call the sprite animation and this just makes sure that once those collision shapes are turned on, it also turns on the sprinkler. Now I do have a signal here that registers when this animation is finished. And when this animation is finished, don't worry, I'm gonna to get to that stuff in just a second. When this animation is finished, you can see down here, it says on animation finished, and then the animation name. If the animation is equal to sprinkle or on, I want you to change the current state back to zero, and then get that animation, and also have it play off. So, all it's doing is it's making sure that what that signal is doing is making sure that when the sprinkler goes off and the animation is done printing or done playing it just turns off the sprinkler so let me go back to the visible layers here if you look closely here you can see right here that these sprinklers are grayed out if you look very closely i'm not sure if you can see it they actually go dark for a second let me uh, see, let me do that. I'm just gonna turn one of these off, one of these sprinkler uh, sprites off. There you go. You can see that it, this one actually turns blue and then it turns itself back off. So that's all that's doing. It's just um, getting the animation um, signal and then it's just resetting it. The Both the state and the uh, animation. Okay, and then this, this um, what is this water tile? This function here, um, all it's gonna do is check, remember those lists that we have up here? It's gonna check these lists and dependent on which um, which tile that, that we have in there is gonna depend on which one of these is gonna be triggered. So if the tile is in the wardable tiles, it's just telling it that it's, it's either dried, which is this here, well, it's dried or if it's already been watered, and all it's gonna do is just make sure that those tiles are set to the water tile. And then if it's fertilized tiles, meaning that these tiles have been fertilized, regardless if it's dry or water, just set the tile back or set the tile to the watered and fertilized tile. So that's all that's doing. Um, this was explained in better detail or greater detail in the last video. So just gonna skim over that. And then here, check soil type. This is the exact same code that we used um, previously to get the tile data. There is practically no change with the exception of this right here, the water soil. Um, excuse me. Uh, the water soil. So this thing is the one that's calling this function here. So that's all that's happening here. It's just going through all this, this crap here. It's calling the water, uh, the water soil function. It's giving it the tile map. It's giving it the tile data, and then it's checking uh, where that tile is on the map, which is done in this variable here, which I don't think um, I went over in the last video. So um, I'm just gonna briefly go over it here. So I just created a new variable called uh, the collided tile map. 
this is when this thing is is being called it's gonna get the tile map and then the tile map has a useful little function called get coordinates for the body rid and then what it's gonna do is get the tile position which would be when this thing is called down here so down here you can see that I have a check soil type and the body and I got the body RID again I went over this in the last video so again I'm not gonna spend too much time on this but the body is gonna be the tile map itself and then the body excuse me, the body RID is the actual tile that's being collided so yeah so check soil type so remember this is the, the tile map that we just passed in and then this is gonna be the tile itself that's being passed in and all we're doing is we're going to convert whatever that data that is being sent into a tile position. That's all this is doing. And then finally, we do it again on the exit. This is just to make sure that um, when the tiles are being changed, it, it registers the new tile. That's all that's doing. Okay. I think that was all for the sprinkler. I hope that wasn't confusing. If it is confusing, again, just leave a comment and I will put on my cape and cowl and come to your rescue. <laughs> okay. So, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, that's right, the plant. So here, I created a brand new... Go here. Plant. I think this is the one yeah so this is super simple the plant structure all I did was I created a, a sprite I gave the sprite um, this was the same as the sprite sheet that I made previously but um, I just added a couple of extra stages to it I'll show you exactly what those look like here in just a second where is it frame so yeah these have not changed at all all I did was um, just add a couple of more stages to it. Um, I gave it an area and a collision shape. That way it has the ability to collide with the strike box that the player has. That strike box is obviously whenever the player interacts with it. Or a box that allows the player to interact with the tile map. And then we have ourselves the plant script. So I gave it a couple of variables. Most of these variables I don't think were even used or even used just yet. So we're going to go into that... Uh, later, I just didn't have time to implement like the health system But anyway, I just gave it health of 10 then I gave it a current age. This is how many days that the plant has been uh, Or the seeds have been planted then here I have uh, a boolean if it's ripe, which should be fa false if it's ever true then we'll allow ourselves to harvest it and then is withered um, this is just to say if the plant has died or not. So this is just another boolean. So let's say this You didn't water the plant for I don't know how many days you didn't water for three days and the HP goes down to zero um, Well, we can set a trigger for that uh, We can set the trigger for is whether to true and then the plant will be dead and then we'll have to do Whatever it is that we want to do and then same thing with the right Okay this right here on the ready function is a get ready the is to uh get the the node the plant area and then i just added it to a group that way i can identify um whenever we go over it if it's a plant or not and then if it is a plant then we do something else um, i didn't add anything to the process function uh we can ignore that i this was for testing <laughs> it did not work out um, again this is another function for uh, just to receive the soil type from the tile map itself um, all I did was use the exact same functions that I just went over to get the to get the tile map itself then I just passed that through then it gets the position of that tile that way whenever we plant the seed um, into the ground it gets the tiles position and it puts it on that tile that way um, that way we don't get any funkiness with it being offset or whatever and then here was like I said the test and this was just to make sure um, 
that it was registering the tiles properly, but it's not a hundred percent. There's some there is some weirdness going on with the tiles, and I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think I even left this here. Doesn't trigger when fertilized and water. Yeah, yeah. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's not registering this. So yeah, definitely needs more testing. But as of right now, this would at least, at the very least, allow you to plant your seeds into the ground. Um, you won't be able to make them grow just yet, but you know, <laughs> it is a work in progress. And then finally, if I'm correctly, I think we have triggering state machine. No, up and down. Oh, okay, I see. This right here is just I added this this um, this input to add a sprinkler. So all I did was um, created a variable in the tile map, the tile map script. So that way, whenever we're on the farm, we can um, load this up. I think I'm actually going to load this into the player, um, into one of the player scripts. That way the player has access to it instead of just the farm. But um, but yeah, so all I'm doing is getting it, um, getting the, shit. Give me a second here while I try to form words. I'm just trying to get the, uh, I created a variable to get the scene of the sprinkler that we had created, right here. Uh, where is the time map? And then I just preloaded it. That way, later on down the line, I can I can grab this, which is exactly what I did, or instantiate it. So, as you can see here, I just said if the UI button, if the UI page down button is ever pressed, give me a new variable, uh, call it new sprinkler, then get the load sprinkler variable which is this thing here which is this scene that was preloaded in and I want you to make a copy of that and then after that I want you to get parent get the node called farm objects and then add that child new sprinkler to the farm objects so essentially all I'm saying is in here uh, as you can see here I got farm store coletta uh, the highlighter and then I got farm objects so all I'm saying is when I instantiate it just add that sprinkler in here like that that's all it's doing delete that because i don't want it there there's no need to have that sprinkler um pre-activate it and i think that was everything that i did where are we on 30 minutes all right well i cut the timer down by half so yay there's that um i don't think i added anything else if i'm not mistaken so give me one second here while i check Make sure that I'm not being done. Add it. No. Okay. Oh, I think there is one thing that I did. Yes, 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 yes. I did forget this. Okay. In the strike box, which is this little box here that's connected to Galetta, I added. What did I add? I know I added a few things here. Okay, process get cropped. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, I added a function called check if seated. And all this is going to do is at, at any point when this thing is called, it's going to check if the... Um, give me a second here. I believe it's in the plant script. Or am I mistaken? Where did I put this? Oh, it's not in the plant script, it's in the plant state. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, I see what I'm doing. Okay, give me a second here. I'm not dumb, I just don't remember what I did. Okay, so I have here a a check if seeded um, function. And all it's gonna do is return can fertilize. And it has true. So if the, if at any point we have already put a seed into the ground, plant state, there you go. As you can see here, if player state is equal to three, meaning this one right here, we're in the plant state, and is it wait zero one two three? No, the fertilizer state. Okay, if we're in the fertilizer state and has seeds is equal to false, then we can plant 
um, we can add the fertilizer to our tile. As you can see here, has seeds equals to false. And then this right here is going to call, or it's not going to call, but it's going to update this has seeds function whenever it's called. And in this particular case, when was this one called? I believe it's called in the strike box, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So remember when I added that area to the plant? Right here. And I said, get plant area, add to group plant area. Well, I had that for the strike box. As you can see here, if the area is in the group of plant area, it's going to get the state machine for the plant and it's going to get the state machine for the fertilizer. And it's just going to update the check if, if it has seeds uh, function that we have inside the plants plant script. So this is going to be called and it's going to pass in um, either a true or false statement and then here has seeds is going to be equal to whatever that statement is. That way we can tell um, we can tell the player or the strike box if there's um, seeds already in the soil and if the seeds are already in the soil then we're not going to allow ourselves to, uh, to fertilize the soil anymore. Um, I believe somebody had asked for that, and it's, I also believe it's the way Stardew Valley um, operates too. I can't remember because I haven't played it in a while, but um, yeah, so this will keep you from being able to fertilize any tiles that have already been seeded. So yeah, I think that is the end of that, right? And then I have another signal. I guess I didn't, I guess I should have mentioned that. area enter plant is in the strike box yeah so this strike box here has the signals here on the area and when that happens um, whenever we whenever it enters um, or whenever an area enters in into the strike box it's gonna check if it's a plant area and then it's gonna run this code and then if it exits it's also gonna run the code again but this time it's going to change it to false. That way, um, this state machine here, the plant state machine, or yeah, the plant state machine and the fertilizer state machine, give me a second here, get reset back. As you can see here, there they are. They uh, they do in fact call. They do in fact call that function. Um, but that's just to make sure that they reset. That way, it's not always true because if we didn't set this back to where is it if we didn't reset these back to false then if we ever ran into a plant and then we walked away from it these were always going to remain true and then we're never ever going to be able to fertilize any tile regardless if there's seeds in it or not so that's why we have one that adds um that way we have one that that triggers when we enter um we enter a, a seed area and we have one when we exit a seed area. That way we can just trigger them on and off, um, depending if we are currently standing on one or not. Okay. Again, I hope none of this is confusing. I hope I was clear on what I was doing, because this, I think, is the end of everything that I've added thus far. And we are at 35 minutes. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to end this because I don't want it any longer than it already is. Okay, so yeah. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. I will come to your rescue. Um, like I said, um, I think I'm going to leave the code as well down in the description this time around. So you guys can peek in there and see exactly how things are working. Just in case, um, you know. I'm not clear enough or I'm not explaining things well enough. Alright children, until next time, farewell.